Hi guys, it's Ruby and Syra, and we're back with another poetry video. Today we will be discussing sonnets and odes. First, we're going to be talking about a sonnet. There are three requirements to writing a sonnet. First is the rhyme scheme. A sonnet has 14 lines and is written in an iambic pentameter. Each line has 10 syllables. It has a specific rhyme scheme and a specific turn point. It's important to remember rhymes begin with the last accented syllable. For example, even though hockey and free both end with the E sound, doesn't necessarily mean that they rhyme because they don't have the same syllables versus hockey and teriyaki that have the same amount of syllables. The most common rhyme scheme is called an Elizabethan or English sonnet. As you can see, the letters represent the lines that rhyme together and they are alternating. So all the A lines rhyme together and all the B lines rhyme together and so on. For example, believe rhymes with eve, round rhymes with sound. The second requirement of a sonnet is the iambic pentameter, which is a rhythmic structure that combines unstressed syllables and stressed syllables in groups of five. Each line contains five pairs of unstressed and stressed syllables, which equals 10 total syllables. Think about it this way. Iambic pentameter mirrors the rhythm of a heart beating. Da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. One unstressed syllable with one stressed syllable. The final requirement of a sonnet is the content and structure. A sonnet expresses a single idea, but it's generally an idea that develops and expands, leading to a conclusion. Poets often use sonnets to express thoughts and emotions. Some common themes include love, beauty, passage of time, jealousy, or even death. An ode is a short lyric poem that praises an individual, an idea, or an event. You can write about someone you admire, something you would like to pay tribute to, or a special event in your life. In the past, odes were performed to music and delivered by a chorus. Odes are traditionally divided into three sections or stanzas. The first, the strophe, signifies the opening section of an ode. In the strophe, you can describe in detail the person or thing you are writing about. The second section of an ode is called the antistrophe. It means turning back and is meant to mirror the opening section of an ode. There's a lot of repetition in this section. Remember, odes are typically very long, so feel free to use a lot of details. Thank you for watching. Syra and I are anxiously waiting for your submissions, and we want to remind you that the last day to submit your poem is April 26th. 